Hello, I'm Anarchy, the Retro Hyena, and this is my channel for fondly remembering and discussing the thingamajigs and whatchamacallits of yesteryear. Some making a comeback, and some we definitely think should. And what's more retro than Renaissance swordsmanship? That's right, we're going way back for this history kick. Alright, this review is for the Longford from Dark Sword Armory. The Longford is an oak shot type 13A blade in a 15th century style English sword. It got its name from Longford Castle in Wiltshire, England. On the website they listed it as a great sword, which had wide popularity in heavy cavalry due to its extra length and reach, as well as in use against pikes and spears. Now, being larger than their average longsword counterparts, great swords were a little more blade heavy, allowing them to deliver powerful cutting blows, yet still retaining good and deadly point control. The point of balance for this sword is a little over four inches, which isn't bad at all for a great sword or a longer long sword. I know on the internet a lot of people get hung up on thinking that it's only a good sword if it has a low point of balance, or it's no good if the balance is beyond three or fill in the blank inches. This pretty much means they don't really understand that different swords have different purposes and uses. It probably also means they get most of their information from the dreaded internet. A point of balance is just that, balance. It all depends on what you want out of a sword versus what you're willing to sacrifice. If the balancing point is too close to the guard, then yes, you can have great tip control, but you lose a lot of cutting power around your center of percussion point. Likewise, the more weight you have towards the tip of the sword, the better cutter you get. Once that blade gets moving, all that weight will go into the force of the cut. Yet, obviously, a heavier tip means a little harder time controlling that tip as precisely as a lighter tipped blade. For example, many people are familiar with the Viking era style blades. These blades are made almost exclusively for cutting. Now that doesn't mean you can't stab or thrust with one, but that wasn't what it was designed to do most. And yet, most Viking era blades have a point of balance around 6 to 7 inches, or even more from the cross guard. And you wouldn't consider one of those badly balanced. Same goes for any sword, including long swords and great swords. It has to be a balance. If you personally want a sword that is mainly for thrusting, and you don't plan on doing a lot of cutting, or only against water bottles or light targets, then yes. You may need or want a sword that has a point of balance very near the cross guard. However, if you are needing a thrusting sword that also can do well against heavily clothed targets or leather armor or whatever, you will definitely want some more weight and that balancing point further out from the guard. This sword in particular is a great cutter, yet is balanced well enough that my thrusts land pretty much where I planned them. Each sword from Dark Sword Armory is handmade and hammered in their forge, so no two swords from them are identical. I personally really like the idea that no one else has a sword like mine. As you can guess, the measurements provided on their website and others, such as Cult of Athena, are approximations, though they do strive to provide consistent products. Dark Sword Armory uses a 5160 carbon steel for their blades, which is then dual tempered to a Rockwell hardness of 60 along the outside edge and a hardness between 48 and 50 for the inner core. The length of my blade is around 37 and a half inches with an overall length of 47 and a half inches. The sword weighs just over three pounds. It has a diamond cross-sectioned cord wrapped wood grip that is covered in stitched leather ending in a lovely scent stopper pommel which gives a nice extra couple of inches to grip. This particular grip is very comfortable in my hand and it makes it very easy to determine the edge alignment. Both the pommel and the cross guard are made from mild steel. The blade has a single fuller running down three-fourths its length with the last fourth coming to a narrow point diamond cross section. The longford has a nice peen 
and the sword overall feels very solid. I wanted to point out that on most of my research and reviews I have seen on the internet for Dark Sword Armory swords, they seem to all be talking about and testing out Dark Sword's older models of swords. In their reviews, they mentioned the blades being made out of different steels like 1060 and being nut fastened or screw fastened or whatever. I just wanted to point out Dark Sword Armory really seems to pay attention to reviews and comments. All of their current line of swords, except their WMA or Western Martial Arts line, are peened. Many reviews out there from 2014 or older. So I just wanted everyone looking at a Dark Sword Armory to pay attention to when the review is made because Dark Sword has made a lot of changes to its swords and process in the recent years. A few last details for the Longford. It has a price tag ranging between $425 and $550. It also has an option of two different leather wrapped wooden scabbards. Their plain scabbard which comes with the sword automatically, is really anything but. It has several entertaining ridges and leather working that itself looks like a custom ordered sheath. Also available for a little more money is an even more elaborate scabbard with an integrated leather belt. Their blades normally are offered unsharpened, yet can be sharpened for an additional fee. As far as the overall appearance of the sword, I think it's pretty cool if I wanted to be honest. I love the color and the style of the grip and the stitching. I believe it gives it an old timey look. I mean, it really looks like it was pulled right from behind the glass of one of those armory displays in some English castle, just unmarred by time. My only slight complaint, or more curiosity, is that the cross guard seems a little on the small side for a grip and a blade of this size. Now I don't know if that was intentional or how the original historical models they chose to base the sword off were, but to me personally, it just seems a little on the below average size for a great sword. As handling goes, as I mentioned before, it feels very solid and I personally like the diamond shaped grip, which I don't see in many swords, even in the mid and high price ranges. I can handle the sword in just one hand without too much trouble and even thrust relatively accurately. However, when holding it in a two-handed grip, this sword almost seems to know where I wanted to go before I do. It is highly accurate, maybe more so than me, with a thrust as well as a joy to cut with. You can tell that it seems to really want to cut and lop things off. Legal things, of course. As for the Longford's durability and temper, the blade has good flex and was able to bend a good bit in both directions and return true. There are several nice demonstrations of destructive testing of the Dark Sword blades on their website. So, since you have those examples to view, I will save my own blade for most of that. Though I did test my sword against both dead and living wood, against which it did great. After a good 30-40 minutes of beating and chopping and thrusting it against stuff, it still felt solid without any movement or rattling, and the edge was still sharp enough to slice paper. No nicks, folding, or denting of the edge whatsoever. Price point. I mentioned before that this sword could range anywhere between $425 and $550, depending on sharpening and the type of scabbard you want. Personally, I always love things to be cheaper, but I think this price is about right based on aesthetics, durability, and the handling I mentioned earlier. I mean, either scabbard would easily be around $150 or more for the same quality if you ordered one like that custom. And with Dark Sword, it's either free or a relatively small price for a full leather scabbard. And that's about it, I guess. This is my first product review, though I hope to maybe do a few more in the future along this line. I'm including a link to the Longford product page in the description below, as well as a video link to an example of Dark Sword's own destructive testing. Until next time, this is the Retro Hyena, helping your backwards glance into the past be a little more awesome. Bye!